Okay, y'all, I want to show you how easy it is to create a drag and drop activity in Google Slides. Now, the example I have here on the screen is, of course, pretty simplistic, but I feel like it's a great example for you to see the possibilities of what you can do. Of course, this is an elementary activity, a math activity, and you could level it for whatever you're doing. So if I'm teaching um, kinder or first just how to count, the activity here is to click and drag to move the apples into the basket and count how many as they move them. So you can see all I can move, hey y'all, I want to show you how easy it is to create a drag and drop activity in Google Slides. And to do this, I'm going to show you with a, a pretty simplistic example, an elementary example, math. We're going to start out with this counting exercise just to show you what I mean when I say a drag and drop activity. So I've created this template with this background that has an apple tree with apples on it and an empty basket. And we've got some grass and sky and a little place for students to put their names. But the only objects that can actually be moved on this slide are the apples. So what the students are going to do is drag and drop the apples into the basket as they count. So right here, you can see I can just click and drag onto an apple. So of course, this is a great activity for the little ones, not only practicing their basic math skills, but also learning a really important computer skill in learning how to drag and drop on the devices that you have available. So um, you can easily just drag and drop over the apples and you can see none of the other objects on here are movable and that's because they are saved as a background image. So I'm going to show you how you can create your own background. Doesn't have to be fancy. Of course, if you want to make it cutesy and fancy, you definitely can but it's really, really easy. And there's no reason that you should have to go purchase anything unless you just want to go spend the money. But you may have a great idea for something that's interactive for your students. And of course, these types of activities can be used at any grade level. So, you know, we can even be doing this in high school. We're not counting apples anymore, but we may be labeling the parts of a frog, or we may be creating a timeline where students are dragging and dropping information to the correct time. So it's, it's really just depends on you and what your learning goals are. So the first thing I want to show you how to create is this background. So I'm just going to walk you through step by step how I created this particular background. You may already have something in mind and keep keep thinking about ways that you could use this. For instance, um, you could have students using a word bank like they do in magnetic poetry. And this, by the way, is exactly how I make those magnetic poetry templates. You could have students uh, choosing or dragging the correct curve onto their graph or manipulating shapes in math. You could have students labeling a number line. You could have students who are using a graphic organizer as the background template, something as simple as a T-chart where they are either adding their own information in text boxes, but if you want that drag and drop, you could have that information saved as an image where they can manipulate it and move it around as well. It could be something as simple as a Venn diagram or something more in depth. So I'm going to jump over to my background here and show you how to create this. So the first thing you want to do is open a new Google Slides presentation. And you could also do this in drawings, but because I believe that Slides has a slight advantage in this when it comes to distributing it, but also creating the final activity in slides is going to allow you to lock this background. It's not really called locking it, 
but that's essentially what we we are doing and that's something that kind of drives people crazy when you try to do it in drawings so i'm going to leave my little example here but i'm going to add a blank slide just to show you from scratch exactly how i did this so the first thing i did was change the background color to the color of the sky that i wanted behind my tree so if i right click on the slide that i have selected and i'm talking about in the left hand panel i am clicking on the slide it's selected and i'm going to go to change background and i'm going to go to color and i'm going to choose this light blue sky color and i'm going to click done so there's the blue the next thing I did was add the grass. And all that is is a shape. So I went up to my shapes and I actually chose not just the square, which you could easily do it with a square, but I chose one of these other little polygons down here that had a little bit more of a flow to it. It's actually a flow chart shape, I believe, and has a little swirly effect. So once you click on a shape, you get the plus sign, these little crosshairs. And what you're gonna do is you are going to click and drag to create that shape. Is that exactly how large you want it to be? And don't worry, you can always come back and drag it a little bit further, which is what I'm doing here. Okay, now the shapes by default are usually this light gray color with a dark gray outline. And I wanna change that. So I'm gonna keep that object selected. I'm gonna click on the paint bucket and I'm gonna choose the green for my grass and I'm gonna click on the border color and I'm actually gonna make it transparent because I don't want a border on this. Now, if you are comparing my final to the one we're creating right here, you'll see that I have still have a little bit of sky below my grass. Uh, of course, that's fine depending on what you're creating, but I'm gonna actually cover this up with one more shape and I'm just gonna add a little rectangle of green and cover that bottom part up so there is all grass down at the bottom. So there's my grass, there's my sky. I'm gonna add my tree. And I found the tree just by going to insert image and then search the web, which by the way, um, these are filtered. So when you search, they actually have a little built-in digital citizenship right here. So I searched for tree clip art and went to go find the tree that I wanted to use in my activity. And to save time from searching to find the exact same tree, because it doesn't seem to be right there at the top, I'm gonna go ahead and select this one and insert it into my drawing here in slides so it's a little bit too small so i'm going to click and drag from the corners by the way if you hold the shift key down it will keep its proportions even so it doesn't get all wonky on you now let's make it just a little bit taller now of course since i am building a landscape here I could add a sun and some clouds and all of that, but I hope you also see the other side of what I'm showing you. I'm creating in Google Slides. Students can create, they can draw, they can create landscapes and settings and pictures and all kinds of really amazing things inside this platform. All right, so the other thing that I needed was my little basket. So again, I'm gonna search for basket and I do usually search with the word clip art so I get the kind of basket I'm looking for. There's my basket. I'm gonna insert and it's just a tiny bit too big although I do need it to be big enough to hold the apples. So I'm gonna click and drag and move it down a little bit. Now, I wanna point out something else that you may discover because you don't necessarily add things in order that you want them on the page. So for instance, my if I had added the basket before I added the grass, it would be back there and all you would see is that little handle. So what you need to get familiar with as you're adding and layering different elements into your background is the arrange feature. So if you go up to your toolbar, click on arrange and go to order, 
you can bring things forward, backwards, all the way to the front, which is what I'm going to do with the basket. Okay, so this is my background. One quick tip on your background is it's really easy just to add a little name plate in here for students to remember to add their name. And so I added a text box by default. It is transparent, but I'm going to make it white. So I'm going to click on the paint bucket and click on white just to make it stand out. So this is my background, but if I went ahead and added all of the elements right now and shared this with my students, they would be able to move the tree around, the basket, everything. And some students, especially the little ones in an activity like this, would get really frustrated trying to manipulate just the apples. So what we're going to do is we are actually going to download this slide as an image. So with the slide selected over here on the left hand slide sorter panel, I'm going to go to file, download and choose the PNG file type. That's going to download our file as an image. So the next thing we want to do is we want to create a new slide deck, which by the way, quick tip, if you just type in slides.new, it will create a brand new slide deck for you. Now, uh, by default, you know, we usually have this title slide and everything. I'm just going to go ahead and control A and delete everything so I have a blank slate. I'm going to title this one my Apple Tree Activity Template. And you probably want to save one as a template that you keep clean before you actually share it with anyone. So, the next step is to now select that one blank image you have in your new slide deck. And I do like to keep these separate. The background saves somewhere else. So if I decide, oh, I need this in my background, I could go back and add it later and download it as an image. So I just don't get things mixed up. So the next thing I wanna do in my template now is I'm gonna right click on the slide and I'm going to click change background like we did when we added the blue sky only this time I'm going to choose an image and so I'm just going to upload that image that I just created and boom there it is click done and now because it is a background image the individual objects cannot be moved around now yes if you got some smart kids they can still change the background to something else but make it clear in your activity what this is about. So this is where I add the elements that I want students to manipulate in the activity, to drag and drop, to move around. So the things that are not in that locked background and for this activity that happens to be the apples. So I'm gonna come back to insert image from the web and I'm gonna search for apple clip art. And here is the apple that I want to use. Is that the right one? Let's see, no, this is the one that I like. I like this one right here. I'm gonna click insert. And oops, I inserted both of them, which by the way, I thought I might've kept that one selected. And notice it had a white background anyway. So that was why I remembered that from before and it wasn't gonna be correct. So I'm just gonna delete that one. But here's my apple. It's way, way too big. It's like the size of the tree. So I'm gonna resize it. I'm gonna hold my shift key down and drag from the corners to make my apple the appropriate size. And now I need more apples. So quick tip here duplicate. You don't have to go insert, 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 and go find it all over again. Just use control or command D on the keyboard. And you can add as many as you want. So I think I just added 10 and I'm just going to arrange my apples now, clicking and dragging to move them around on the tree so that students can see them individually. So I did put 10 apples in there and 
the next thing that we need to do is assign this to our students. So when I go into, say, Google Classroom, there's a couple of ways that you could do this. First of all, you could attach this and make a copy for each student. That's going to automatically create the copies for students. They're going to have their own individual slide deck where they can create and use this little drag and drop feature and you give them whatever directions you want. I could also create a blank slide at the beginning and click and drag and move that to the front and add directions. So I could put the directions right here. Those directions could also be duplicated in Google Classroom or just in one place, up to you. The other option that I really like as a teacher is the ability to have all of my students working in one slide deck. However, if students are not used to this, you can run into some issues where they accidentally are on the wrong slide. So one thing that you can do to help assign a slide to each student is I can come over here to my little template that I have on slide number two at this point. Remember that duplicate little tip I gave you earlier? So you can actually duplicate a slide as well. So I could control D here to make a slide for every student. And there are a few ways that you can assign these to, to your, your kiddos. So of course, these, these would be in this particular example, probably the itty bitties. We're talking primary grades here and you could tell them, you know, okay, Gracie, you are slide number three. Johnny, you are slide number four and help them navigate. You could also create a little table of contents at the top of your slide deck, which is something that I teach in my Google Slides Masterclass, which is really easy, and you just internally link to those slides. But you could also just put the numbers on the, the slide after your directions. So you could come over and add another slide and add slide assignments and just simply start adding the numbers here. So this one would be directions, assignments, and then we might have Gracie and Johnny, et cetera. And here, make sure I fix this, you can actually link these. So I could highlight Gracie's name, hit Command K or Control K on your keyboard or the Insert Link button, and hit this little drop down here that says slides in this presentation and go to slide three and add it. So Gracie has her own slide. And so from here, if I was going to assign these, I would probably go ahead and insert a little text box and put their name on the slide so that that is their cue that they are on the correct slide. So Gracie's got her slide. She can now come over here and move her apples. Um, Again, you know, classroom management is going to help you out here. But as a teacher, this is great to see them all in one place, to give them feedback in one place. And I love the slide sorter view so that I can see how all of my students are working at once. So that's that little icon um, underneath the little the numbered slides you see on the left hand side. That's your slide sorter. You can click on the tile or the grid view to see all of those at once. So that's how easy it is to create your own drag and drop activity in Google Slides.